One of the most common criticisms of evolution, made by creationists, is that scientists just make up millions and billions of years in order for, what they call microevolution, to have enough time to produce macroevolution, so there's enough time for one organism to turn into another. We won't go into how these are false terms, and that it's all just evolution. We also won't go into how this one kind of animal turning into another is also a false idea, because everything is in a constant state of flux, and there is no such thing as a kind. But as for deep time, it is not imaginary. It is something you can see with your own eyes. It is true that evolution needs great spans of time to bring about significant changes, and that is where the evidence for deep time comes in. In this video, I'm going to talk about only one aspect of deep time, but in my opinion it is the clearest and most amazing one, something creationists call the starlight problem, cosmological distance and the speed of light. First, a little groundwork. It is important to get an elementary grasp of the scale of the universe. The speed of light is the most important factor in understanding the cosmos. It is a constant and always has been. Many creationists desperately try to claim that the speed of light was faster in the past, but there is absolutely no evidence of this, and it is ridiculous to even consider it and to twist the fundamental laws of the universe to save your particular belief system is quite pathetic. The moon is approximately 378,000 kilometers from Earth. That means it takes light about 1.3 seconds to travel that distance. It takes light a little over 8 minutes to reach us from the surface of the sun. This is a very important point. When you look at the sun, you are looking 8 minutes back in time from your relative position in space. If you see a CME, it actually happened 8 minutes ago. Pluto is almost 6 billion kilometers from Earth. The New Horizons spacecraft will arrive there on July 14, 2015. Due to the speed of light, when we look at Pluto through a telescope, we see it as it was approximately five and a half hours ago. And here's where we really start to reach out. The closest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away. If this star exploded right now, it would take 4.2 years for us to see it. We would be effectively looking 4.2 years into the past. The star Fomalhaut is about 25 light years away about 236 trillion kilometers. This is the star around which the first extrasolar planet was discovered, imaginatively named Fomalhaut b, about three times the mass of Jupiter and with an orbit of 872 years. When we look at this system through the Hubble telescope, we clearly see where this planet is in its orbit. However, because it takes the light from this system 25 years to reach us, we see it not as it is now, but as it was 25 years ago. It really is like looking back in time. We know Fomalhaut is 25 light years away because we can directly measure it using parallax. The Helix Nebula is 650 to 700 light years away and spans approximately 2.5 light years. We are seeing it as it was about 700 years ago, at the beginning of the Renaissance, before the telescope was invented. The Orion Nebula lies approximately 1500 light years away. Because of this great distance from Earth, we see it as it was about 1500 years ago shortly after the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the time of King Arthur and Muhammad. As a side note, the Orion Nebula lies about halfway out to the maximum distance we can realistically measure using parallax. So far so good for the creationist. All of these objects are within 6,000 light years from Earth, and so all of the events we see within this radius happen within their worldview. But you know we can't stop there. In 1054 AD, Japanese and Chinese astronomers recorded a new star which was so bright it could be seen in the daytime for 23 days. What they witnessed was the rare event of a close supernova, one that would create the Crab Nebula. One of the most amazing facts about their discovery was that they were seeing an explosion that happened in the distant past about 6,500 years before. That is because the star that exploded was about 6,500 light years away. They saw an explosion that happened in approximately 5446 BCE. The Crab Nebula has continued to expand over the last 950 plus years to about 10 light years across. It continues to expand at about 1800 kilometers a second. It appears to us to be about 10 light years across, but we see it as it actually was about 6500 years ago. If it continued to expand at its currently observed rate, it would actually span about 39 light years in its current position. What we see as the nebula is the matter that composed the body of the star which was flung out into space during the massive explosion. How can we be seeing events that happened that long ago if everything were created 6,000 years ago? This is what creationists loosely call the starlight problem, and it sure is a problem for them. They have created this imaginary 6,000 light year bubble around Earth where events actually happen, but outside of this faith line, just past 6,000 light years, what we observe isn't really happening. It's just a movie 
created by their intelligent designer. Stars explode, galaxies merge, light bends, but it's all an illusion? They call it creation with the appearance of age. This is like claiming that we all just popped into existence five minutes ago with memories already formed and hair that needed cutting. How could you prove otherwise? Everything just popped into existence a few minutes ago with the appearance of age. Just like their desperate and dishonest attempts to claim that the speed of light could have been different in the past, it's a cop-out. Creation with the appearance of age is a useless hypothesis. It gets us nowhere and provides us no useful framework for anything but propping up a religious belief system that is contradicted by the evidence. As Neil deGrasse Tyson says, this kind of religious apologetics halts inquisitiveness and scientific progress. Here are some of the coolest astronomical facts I missed out on while I was a creationist. The planetary nebula NGC 2818 is about 10,400 light years away. Planetary nebulae are formed when a star runs out of fuel to sustain nuclear reactions in its core. It then sheds its outer layers in these spectacular formations. In 2002, a spectacular outburst was observed that had never been seen before, and has been characterized as being somewhat similar to that of a nova. V838 Mon lies approximately 20,000 light years away at the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. This means that we observed an explosion that took place 20,000 years ago, around 18,000 BCE. Early astronomers classified globular clusters as nebulae or stars because telescopes were not powerful enough to reveal that globular clusters are actually composed of many stars. NGC 2808 is one of our galaxy's largest globular clusters composed of more than a million stars. There is debate among astronomers whether NGC 2808 was formed as part of our galaxy or if it was a captured dwarf galaxy. It is thought that Omega Centauri, another massive globular cluster in our galaxy, which contains about 10 million stars, is indeed the remnant of a dwarf galaxy. Studies have indicated the presence of a black hole in its core. M75 is one of the most densely populated globular clusters known, and has a radius of about 67 light years. Globular clusters stick together because of their strong gravity, and the orbit of galactic core is a single unit. Remember, this is how far back in time we are looking when we observe these objects, because it took the light that long to reach us. And these are all inside our own galaxy. The Milky Way itself is approximately 100,000 light years across, and from Earth, the core of the galaxy is approximately 30,000 light years away. It is estimated that the Milky Way is home to between 200 and 400 million stars. These are estimates based on calculations from our sideways viewpoint, considering the fact that we can't see all of the stars. There is also debate on the inclusion of brown dwarf stars in the official count. We've also started to discover extrasolar planets. It seems that many stars, if not most, are orbited by planets. It seems likely that there may be more planets out there than stars. It is estimated that the maximum extent of the sun's gravitational field is about two light years, and the distance between our sun and the nearest stars is four or more light years. When you consider how many stars comprise the bands of our Milky Way, and the great distances between those stars, then you easily see how a galaxy like ours can be 100,000 light years in diameter. Our Sun, together with the whole solar system, is orbiting the galactic center on a nearly circular orbit. We are moving at about 250 kilometers per second, and need about 220 million years to complete one orbit. Our lives are timed in seconds and minutes, hours and days, years and decades, but the universe runs on a much slower clock. When you look into the sky, you are seeing the same stars that your human ancestors gazed at. They are the same throughout your whole life. What you don't see is that they are not the static decorations of the heavens that they appear to be, or that the writers of ancient religious texts claimed them to be. They comprise a huge machine that moves on a cosmic time scale. The cosmos is a gigantic time machine that allows us to look into the far distant past.